Hello, welcome to another fantastic episode of ESC Fan TV and we're here for our second part of our Australia Decides show. Now, you may be wondering, first of all, because I have a fantastic panel of guests there, where's Stuart? Well, he's gone off sunbathing on the Gold Coast. I don't know, we send him out there and all he does is sunbathe. One show and he's off. I can't believe it. I'm as upset as you are because I'm still in the UK. Now, let's get down to business. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons uh, down below. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube. We're everywhere. And tonight we're looking at the five remaining songs in this year's Australia Decide. I've got a fantastic panel of guests with me. And let's meet them. Let's say a very good evening. Good morning to Curtis. Hello. Good evening from Australia. Hey, lovely to see you on the show again. Also Thank joining you. us, we've got Patrick. Yo, yo. Hey, lovely of you to join us. Uh, long time ESC fan TV fans will remember from last year. It's Mitchell. Hi, Sydney calling. Oh, it's fantastic to see you again. And also, uh, we're recording a show at a decent time of the kind of day for you, which is... Uh, I know, I'm oh liking goodness, this. Yes. <laughs> yeah i mean mitchell dedication to the cause i think we had him up at like 5 a.m sometimes last year to oh, do a wow. show so you know this this is a, an improvement uh also joining us we've got the lovely flair good evening flair hey everyone how are you i'm really well thanks and also we've got the fantastic michael good morning, good morning. Good morning. and a big hello to you as well now the the songs that we are going to be uh, looking at today, we've got Casey Donovan, uh, Proud, we've got Jack Vigeon, I Am King, I Am Queen, we've got Mitch Tambo together, we've got Jaguar John's Rabbit Hole and Deirdre Raw Stuff. At the end, I'm going to be asking the panel for their favourite song out of those five, but also right. I'm going to be asking them for their tip on who's going to win this year's Australia Decide. Now, the first song we're going to look at is Casey Donovan's Proud. Uh, the youngest ever winner of Australian Idol, um, a figure on stage, screen, done presenting, done writing, currently in Chicago. Before we ask for the panel's views, let's take a listen and find out what it's all about. You can shut me out, but I will stand tall, and you can let me down, but I will Hey, what a beautiful ballad there. Let's go straight to Patrick. What are we thinking of Casey Donovan's Proud? Um, so, a bit of background regarding this one. First of all, this was a song that was actually submitted by another songwriter through the public submission process. And it, when it was picked up um, by Casey and she had a first listen to it and she was attracted to it straight away. And I can see why, because the song the lyrics, the production, they match her vocals absolutely beautifully. And I think she performs this with all her heart and soul. So I really hope that when it comes to the stage performance next Saturday, I think she will do really, really well. Um, whether it will be enough, though, to win the, entire comp um, win the entire national final, that remains to be seen. But she's got, I think she's got a fairly decent chance there to see what we can go with. Um, obviously, there are comparisons with Proud, obviously, from North Macedonia last year. In fact, that was one of the first things that came to my mind when I saw the song title. But I think the song does stand out on its own. So, again, remains to be seen how it will go. Okay. Fleur, what, what do we make of, of this song? Um, I wasn't expecting a ballad from Casey because she can do lots mm. of different songs yes. and last year she did sing um tonight again up in the gold coast and she, it sounded really well um sounded really well what am i talking about it sounded really good but um i yeah i don't know about a ballad and yeah the the problem with this song mainly is because it's um called proud if it had any other title i'd probably have a bit more confidence in it 
because it's going to be automatically compared to um, Tamara from North Macedonia, isn't yeah, it? Exactly, yeah, exactly. That's the main exactly. problem. And it's another ballad and it's another big voice ballad. Mm. So, I'm what? Um, Unfortunately, yeah. see, everyone's like, oh, you know, I compare it to Tamara's Proud and things like this. And I'm like, Heather Small released a song called Proud about 20 years ago. <laughs> oh, like, absolutely. Yes. oh, absolutely. But absolutely. But in Australia, the fandom, I mean, I've been watching Eurovision for a very long time, uh, like uh, longer than some of our panels have probably been around, to be honest, <laughs> <laughs> like Curtis. Um, but since Australia's been taking part, um, the fandom has just grown. Yeah. So mm. a lot of a lot Absolutely. of Australian fans aren't going to remember something from twenty years ago. Let's be honest. <laughs> this, this is this is this is true. It's a, it's a sign of my age as well. I, I admit, Claire. Um, let's, <laughs> let's move round to uh, Michael. Michael, what are you making of Casey Donovan's song? I have been a Casey Donovan fan for years. Uh, when she opened uh, Straight Aside last year with Tonight Again, I was blown away. Let's just say this is a gentle breeze, this song. Probably not yep. on the top of the list mm. of songs I want this yep. time around. She could do better. Yeah, yeah. It could be a stronger song. She is an amazing singer. I don't know whether this song is going to showcase her as well as she can do. Mm. Yeah, so what we're saying, the stars haven't quite quite collided in the right formation. No. Um, yeah. for, her, for her, yeah. And um, Curtis, would you agree with that assessment? Yeah, I totally agree. Casey Donovan has amazing vocals. Again, I was there live uh, at the Australia Decides last year and she killed tonight again. It was amazing. It could have been even better than Guy Sebastian, uh, Guy Sebastian's version. Yeah, absolutely. Out of, the park, out of the park. So I was hoping that she was going to submit a song similar to that. Like she just slays it. She just hits it. But this song is not immediate. It takes a long time to build. And by the time it starts building, it gets boring. Um, oh, one of my yeah. friends saw her live. She did a, she may have done, oh, I can't remember, but she saw a, a concert um, and Casey Donovan performed her song Proud. And I was like, okay, first live version. Um, and it, it didn't excite me. So I'm hoping they, they pull something um, together for Australia Decides. And as we know, she's an amazing singer. So she will deliver. Yeah, the other yeah. side of it is we've now seen the semi-final draw. Where mm. with countries like Sweden and Russia, you know, the real big fish, you, uh, Ukraine, I don't know, will be as big because um, a lot of um, the big names have not returned because um, of, uh, you know, performing yeah. in Russia, all that the sort scandal. of stuff. Yes. Yeah, the scandal. <laughs> but if we're going to be up against Russia and Sweden and a, a couple of other, even Cyprus is a big country now, um, is this song the right song to send? That's well, the yeah. other side of it. It's a good question. Mitchell, what's your take on that? Well, I'm a sucker for a good ballad, and I really like this ballad. I think um, it has a good story in the song, uh, obviously a really resilient song. I love her pure vocals. Um, I actually like in the chorus that it's not just, like, straightforward. It's got, like, that kind of jump in the rhythm. Um mm -hmm. Uh, interestingly enough, like there were years, there was one year where there were two songs with the title Warrior in one year. Oh, so yeah. I think like, yeah. we can have songs with the same title. Um, I don't think it gives a proud comparison at all. Um, but this reminds me actually more of the song Let It Go from Frozen. It has that kind of Disney signature does, song. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I can hear that. Yeah, and I, I Interestingly enough, I know uh, Joanne would love a key change and I wanted a key change as well, but there was none of that. Um, I liked it. It was a hooky melody, um, but I can see that um, it's a repetitive chorus by the end of it. You're like, oh, it's three minutes, you know. So, um, yeah, I, I get it, but I, I actually really liked it. And first hearing, I, I got really into it. Okay. Yeah. Now, there's a, there's a Guy Sebastian theme. Uh, that runs through the first couple of songs that we're looking at. Because um, the second yep. song we're looking at is Jack Vision, I Am King, I Am Queen. I was oh, so course. excited to hear mm. um, Jack mm. was entering um, yep. Australia Decides, mainly because it's actually an Australian singer that I'd heard of 
um, that actually wasn't kind of like from 20 years ago, a.k.a. Yeah. Vanessa Amorosi. Um, because I saw yeah. his audition on Australia's Got Talent many years ago, and I was absolutely blown away uh, by this guy's voice. Now, he's obviously a lot older now. Um, mm -hmm. Having won the third season of Australia's Got Talent, he went on um, to take a break from the music industry. But most recently, he's been mentored by Guy Sebastian um, in The yeah, Voice yeah, Australia. Yeah. And he made an appearance at the start of this year on America's Got Talent, The Champions, yeah. as well. Um, let's take a listen to this little ditty and see what we all think. Some days I hate me, some days I love me, some days the sun shines so bright I can barely see. I cry to my mother, sometimes the world seems so mean, and I remember I am king, I am queen. Uh, now, I am. Uh, I'm going to just throw it out there because I just like really like this song. Um, but I obviously need to get the panel's views. So we're going to dive straight in and go to Curtis Jack Vision. So we're talking about ballads. This is how you do a ballad. This yeah. is what Casey Donovan needed to do. However, Jack's doing it. Jack is, he's uh, amazing, amazing vocalist. He will deliver it live. And the song is really enjoyable and I feel really emotional listening to it. It was one of my early favorites and it's still a big favorite of mine as well. Um, and again, uh, it, it touches me because it's, it touches on a lot of things that a lot of people um, are also facing about I'm king, but I'm also queen. How we're not just, you know, boys are boys and girls are girls. No, boys yeah, can be yeah. feminine and, yeah, and girls yeah. can be masculine. You know, yeah, about absolutely. gender equality, gender diversity, fluidity. So I love how it's touching on these modern issues and problems. Yeah. And you know what? That's one of the things um, I really, really love um, about that. Um, Mitchell, uh, let's get your view on this track. Okay. So I loved the song uh, immediately. I love that the song kind of doesn't start off with any intro. It just rushes in. Um, it kind of grabs your attention. I love his uh, jazzy, subtle intricacies when he sings. You know, he just sings kind of like simple lines, but he does a little like jazzy growl to every line. I think that's something that obviously the juries give a tick in their in their list for. Uh, I think uh, it was pretty amazing to think that this song was supported by just a piano and gospel-like backing vocals. Uh, a lot of runs, maybe sometimes towards the end, I was thinking less is more. Um, but I think it was just building up and it kind of listening to it all kind of sounded like all kind of one big tone. Um, uh, yeah, I thought the end kind of threw me off um, that it was like all in head voice for me. I kind of was expecting a, like a big finale finish. So that was kind of a little lackluster just for myself. But I still really like this song. It actually kind of reminds me of if Guy Sebastian did an acoustic version of the song Choir it would sound something like this. Yeah, so that's yeah, kind of, course, yeah. yeah, that's kind mm. of what I thought when I heard it. But um, yeah, I, I really like it, and it's a great, um, it's a great uh, song by Jack Fidgen for sure. And he co-wrote this with only one other person, so the lyrics are really special as well and powerful. Yeah, I mean, mm. um, Flair with this kind of top because Jack's obviously having like a, a massive comeback at the moment because it all seems to. Yeah. He seems to have disappeared without a trace. And then all of a sudden, at the back end of 2019, he just seems to have come back. Um, yeah. Um, with, is this yeah. capping it off for him? Yeah. Um, he's had to reintroduce himself to the Australian music scene. And this is a great way to do it, I think. This, I, I do honestly think it's going to get compared to Bilal no matter what, even yeah. though it's slightly different song. Bilal was all about I'm going to be king and you know, rah, and we've got I'm king, I'm queen. But I think Jack goes that one stage further with this. I think this song is probably going to be the jury favourite. I think the juries will be all over this one. Um, um, the televote, mm. I don't know. He's um, he, he cops a lot of flack from what I do see. I don't know why. Oh, yeah. 
I don't know why. I've kind of missed all that. Um, I because I'll. Sorry. I don't tend to listen to the lot of um, the mainstream type music on the radio. I still like my classic rock. <laughs> I grew up listening to that. I still listen to that. So I'm kind of a, I can't, I'm kind of unaware of what's going on. But he just, I don't know. There's just this anti Jack Brigade for some reason. And I think, I mean, yes, he's he's had an absolutely, you know, yeah. for someone so I, young. Yeah, um, I don't know if it's a tall poppy syndrome. It could be that. Because he, what did he, he was what, 14 when he won the first competition, wasn't he? Yeah, he was really young. Yeah, 13, yeah, yeah is, very young. Is that what it is? Because that's a big thing here. Like, people just like to yeah. cut people down that have done, you know, Patrick, achieved so much just, success. Let's, let's just wrap this up by coming to you. Mm. Um, touching on a little bit of what Fleur just said um, before about some of the feedback that's been coming through regarding Jack. Um, when this song first came out, um, I noticed even on some of the Australian Eurovision groups, there was a lot of this talk about him being the token gay in uh, the competition oh, right, and that kind of stuff. Right. And I was like, are you freaking kidding me? I, is is yeah. this the kind of feedback that we're actually giving a song like this? Something that he has written from his very heart, something that he performs with gusto, and all you're doing is trying to reduce it to a stereotype. And these are yep. people who claim to be like the most avid of Eurovision fans, I'm thinking. Yeah. Do you, do you yep. even know what Eurovision is? <laughs> Um, like I love, like I love the song. I love the message behind it. Um, I agree that you'll probably do really, really well for juries if it um, if it goes well on stage um, next Saturday. And we all know it will come down to the stage performance. But yeah, it was just that kind of um, that feedback, those kind of comments that were coming through. That really sort of dragged me down. I'm like, why are we even still making these types of comments? Like in 2020, of all times. Yeah, but know. yeah, like. Uh, yeah, go on. Totally agree with you on that because, you know, we, it's, you know, let's face it, attitudes have moved on. You'd like to think, you know, we've, we've mm. progressed a lot now, haven't we, as a society um, across the world as well. Um, you know, there aren't, there, there isn't any space for those types of comments anymore. No, no I don't think so. Absolutely oh, not. I agree. Yep. So, um, Let's move on. Let's let's take uh, song three. Uh, this is Mitch Tambo, song Together. He's a singer-songwriter. Yeah. Um, yep. A self-penned debut in 2016. He's reached the final of Australia's Got Talent uh, last year. Um, he cuts across cultures um, in his music. Uh, the song, as I said, is called Together. Let's take a listen and see what you think. No, we don't have to fear if we're together. You know what? I have another soft spot for this. I'm going to go straight, straight to Michael. These types of songs do well, don't they? They do indeed. You know what he needs? It needs a little bit of a revamp, and this could go mm. a long way. Just a little bit of pop in there, and it's a great look. But uh, at this stage, the way it's written, not going to make it through, I don't think. Okay. And um, let's go uh, across to... Patrick, let's go for Patrick. All right, I was just swaying away there as that song was playing. Um, first listen, I thought this was brilliant. Um, this is personally in my top four, um, and I preface that by saying that the top, my top four, are songs that could easily win the competition. So it's, it's a it's a tight contest in my four. Um, Mitch, um, again, the message is strong. Um, coming together. Um, comments have been made um, about um, the bushfire season, especially, and with everything that's been happening back in Australia um, with the bushfires and everything, and kind of linking in with this message of coming together, um, sort of the Indigenous theme coming through. 
what and what not in the Indigenous language. That's always a, that's always a fan favourite, um, which is why I'm kind of putting this in my top four. Um, again, if you can replicate that on stage, and as Michael said, it can put a little bit of bang into that, I think the song will go very far. It will get very, very close to winning. Whether it will get over the edge, again, remains to be seen. But I think, um, no, I think Mitch has actually pointed a really strong entry here. Mm. And going from from about one Mitch to another another Mitchell, <laughs> hey, um, I I get some real anthemic vibes for this. Um, mm. you yeah, know, we've we've talked sure. about the staging and stuff. What are you expecting from the performance? Oh, probably so much. I think I was thinking when I heard this, uh, you know, the the fireworks that like spin around in circles. I was thinking like, even like halfway through, that's going to be happening, and and there's going to be a lot of. Uh, explosiveness on stage I think I think he's got a really good voice I know someone that actually uh, saw him at a corporate event like only months ago and it's oh, just yeah. amazing how much he's blown up like from I, I think he was on a show I can't remember Australia's Got Talent or something yeah. but yeah. I yeah. think even yeah. that like he was on there but he wasn't like the talk of the town but now he's really blown up and it's really great to see his career like blossom in front of our eyes um i obviously love i love a good uh in a eurovision successful song i go for traditional motives meeting contemporary motives and this has that i love that it yeah. doesn't sound too traditional and it actually sounds like something that you could play on the radio and i think for australian music we need more of this kind of style on our radios so um yeah it's, it's definitely it really made me really happy to hear that uh, incredibly short bridge, I'll point out. I think he has the highest belting male singer out of all the male yeah. singers. So that's a really good thing. Um, our only thing I think is like the last time, and this is going to be the case for a lot of songs for me, the last time I heard the chorus, I was like, okay, I heard this chorus. I'm thinking maybe they're going to do a sound of silence and all like vocally rearrange things and go crazy in the final chorus. Yeah. Um, I hope he does something like that because I really, that would impress me so much. But uh, I can't wait to see this live for sure. Okay, and Flair, are you going to be picking up the phone and voting for Mitch on uh, Saturday night next week? Um, I'll probably give it a couple of votes. Yes, I, I, I do enjoy the song. I, I think this is a song that Europe wants us to send because of yeah. the Indigenous component to it. Mm. Um, yeah. When I was reading, you know, what people had thought of um, Australia Sides last year, a lot of people wanted us to send um electric fields yeah they they want that they want that and look kino did really well with their indigenous elements as well um the televote i think europe wants this i think though the song is a little bit yeah as um michael was saying uh, it doesn't need a revamp it's quite simplistic if it didn't have the um uh i think the language is called gamilla ray if it didn't have the gamilla ray language and the um it's not a didgeridoo it's i think it's called a yadaki i did read up about it if it didn't have those it would just be another pop song yeah mm, so right, i think yeah. it, it it does need something extra for it to be um you know a sure thing but yeah, yeah it's it's definitely one of the better songs in the competition i think yeah and just moving on to to curtis just to wrap it mm -hmm. up um mm -hmm. i mean We've talked on the uh, Norway shows that we've been doing, actually, because Norway have had a, a Viking entry that romped in the yes. semi-final a couple yeah. of weeks ago. And yeah. we were saying that sometimes people are just sending sort of like, you know, it's this almost like stereotypical culture thing that Europe wants us to send. It, is that a good thing? Or, you know, should we actually be actually saying, no, hang on, it's, it's, a, it's a song contest and it represents us and, you know, yeah what's your view well it, it just reminds me of um the viking norwegian entry this year it reminds me of rasmussen uh yeah oh yeah totally <laughs> look how well that did europe fell in love with the rasmussen um they loved the theatrics and just because it it, it bet can portray a stereotype doesn't mean it's not a good song and mm. like with mitch tambo's song it's a very well produced song um like with Fleur said it is a pop song with indigenous flair. Um, I think what's missing is more indigenous. I would like like a another indigenous instrument or maybe changing the last chorus to his indigenous language um, might give it that extra kick that it needs. It just needs to like 
as Mitch was saying, it needs a slight change at the end because it does get a tad repetitive. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, is there a chance that this might be revamped for Saturday night, do we think? It could. I think, mm, yeah. Sorry. I actually think it might. I actually think it might. I think we, at the end of the day, I think we've got to remember that we've, um, with the songs that have been released so far, they're just studio versions. Like they yeah. give us an idea of what the song is going to be like, but we don't know how it's actually going to come out until it comes out on stage and, and we see it in person, um, how it's going to look on our TV screens. Um, and it will, again, an indication of what it will look like in Rotterdam if it were, were to, if it were to win. And you know what? And it would even change again if it won Australia Decides and it went to Rotterdam. Just look at what happened with Kate last year. She came out with this concept. Um, everybody kind of panned it because they thought, what's this ridiculousness? But instead of, but she took on the feedback and instead of sort of staying with that concept, she evolved it and it went mm. places. So we don't know where that's going to, um, we don't know where it's going to head. So I think a revamp is definitely um, definitely under consideration. And I know this is not one of the songs that we're meant to be discussing here, but just think back to Vanessa and the revamp of her song that she's just um, done that she's going to perform next weekend. So she's also taken a bit of feedback on and we'll hopefully see what's going to happen with her next week as well. Yeah, and just... Uh... I know to, to viewers, if you're tuning in and you're thinking, what's Patrick talking about? You know, we're not supposed to be talking yeah. about that song. Get onto YouTube now. See the Australia Decides Review Show Part 1, um, which was broadcast yesterday evening. Now, let's move on to uh, the fourth song we're going to look at. It's Jaguar Johns. Uh, we're going to go down the rabbit hole. The song's called Rabbit Hole, uh, written by Dina Lynch and Aidan Hogg. Um, was born in Japan and stayed there until he was nine years old. Got an Australian father, Taiwanese mother, um, hails from Brisbane. Uh, the genre is indie rock. Um, let's take a look at Down the Rabbit Hole and see what we all think. Watch me drum, watch me go and tease. Watch me take away the truth. Oh, let's go straight to Mitchell because I just saw you bopping off camera. It's just like volunteering immediately, going exactly. To me. <laughs> yeah, I love this song. I love this song so much. It's really my kind of jam. Um, it's definitely like on my Spotify playlist. Uh, yeah, so much I love about it. I love the distorted chorus. Um, the it kind of took me off guard because when I first heard the verse, I was like, okay, just a regular song, and then I was like, okay, wow, what what a really cool bop. Um, yeah, she, the music video, she's like shaking around at one point and I'm like, you look like a mouse that's been bitten by a snake or something. And, oh. <laughs> yeah, but, um, rather simplistic hooky chorus, uh, really powerful and effective. Um, yeah, a lot of dynamic. Uh, I think even though I love it so much, I still don't think that this could be my, my winner. For Australia, I don't know if this represented Australia. I just don't know if it has the pizzazz that it needs to win the whole contest. But it's it's a really good showcase, and um, it's for me, it's put Jaguar on the map. So, like in my musical uh, search. So yeah. yeah. No, let's let's go let's go across to Michael. Uh, do you enjoy being you know put in the rabbit hole with this song? Oh, my goodness. This is Estonia's goodbye to yesterday's psychopathic cousin. This <laughs> song is, this is everything. I mean, this is, uh, God bless it. This is Triple, Earth, Triple J's Unearth have found someone fantastic. Mm. This, is, this is something I can see on stage. I can see just going a little bit different. And I am Jaguar Joan. All the freaking way. Well, hey, now, yeah, wow. Do you know what the one, the one thing I'm going to have to do then is just go, go straight across to Fleur and just go. Is this going to be the song that springs the surprise on Saturday? Because yeah. you know, I've heard so much about Montaigne. I've heard so much about Jack. Um, I've not heard so much vibe about this one, but it seems people really love it. I well, uh, I'm with Michael. This is my favourite. 
look, I I love rock music, so this was probably the one. If anyone's going to say, Fleur, which song do you like? It's going to be this one. Um, I think it's about time that we sent something different. We've had pop, we've had pop ballads, we've we had pop rap, but yeah, we need to keep pushing that envelope. I think. I think this is the um, this is the only song in the competition that is like that does have a rock edge. Not the other songs do. Yeah. So it's already different, but this would be awesome if we sent it. I don't know if, if it will win. I hope it does, but. Um, yeah, I, I love this song. I'd never heard of her before, so this has been it's been great to going, actually be introduced to a new um artist. Yeah, and, and going to to Curtis, I think one of the strengths this year in Australia decides, um, in actual fact, I'd say more so than last year. I think the the diverse range of musical yes. styles is absolutely brilliant. Exactly, um, and I think this this symbolises it. I mean, what's your take? Yeah, so last year was um. There were a lot of, uh, what do you call it, um, reality show, um, X Factor, The Voice yep. winners mm. kind of year. Mm. This year, um, Paul Clark and Blink TV have gone in a very different direction. They have included reality TV stars, um, Casey Donovan Counts, um, Jack Vigeon and Diana Rubis. Mm-hmm. Um, they're yeah. all reality TV stars. But now he's included these um, not unknown artists, but indie artists who aren't quite mainstream and haven't been on reality tv and i saw in an interview that um paul clark was uh being interviewed in and he said that europe wants something different every year we send all these pop songs yeah and the juries are loving it but the televote isn't so i knew that paul clark want wants to send something different and mm. europe wants to see something different and this is different jaguar jones is different and I think Europe will respond very well to her. Mm. Yeah. And Patrick, I mean, is this something you'd be voting for on Saturday? Um, so I mentioned before that uh, Mitch Tambo was one of my top four. Jaguar Jones is another one of my top four and I think it is yeah. one that easily has a chance of winning on Saturday. Again, if disclaimer, if it's done right. Um, it also gave me vibes of, um, I don't know if you guys remember um, Data Dust from last year, Elephant yeah, yeah. in Tree. Yeah, 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 it yes, gave yes, me yes. a lot of those vibes um, when I listened to it. And, and I've listened to um, Jaguar's now, one now a couple of times. I think Rabbit Hole is very, very well produced. Um, it's, very, it's very quirky. It is very Aussie. Um, and I think Fleur does have a point um, in that we should be sending something that is uniquely Australian. And I think um, sometimes, like, yeah, people won't want to go down the Indigenous route and say, oh, yeah, we should send something that's Indigenous because that's, that's Australian. But I think also Australia prides itself on its musical culture as well and its musical identity. And I think Australia has had a strong indie rock scene for many decades now. And I think this would be the kind of song um, that would epitomise that in Rotterdam if it were to win next Saturday. Okay, yeah. strong stuff as well. It sounds like that's certainly one to watch for. Now, the final song uh, that's left is Didri, and the song's called Raw Stuff. Um, the debut album, uh, Measurements, has over 30 million streams. Um, she's played uh, many festivals, um, like Latitude and things like that. Um, toured the US, got a fantastic reputation. Um, let's take a listen. And I know that I love me, but loving's not enough. It's not how I planned it, but life has some raw stuff. Life has some raw stuff. Um. Yeah, a bit of a bit of a gear change, I think. Mm. Um, let's go. Let's go straight to Fleur. What are we making of raw stuff? Oh boy! Um, oh, <laughs> what do I think of it? Um, it sounds like the sort of stuff that Billy Joel was releasing back in the seventies. I'm sorry. It, I, I'm reading all these things on Twitter saying it's fresh and all that. To me, it sounds dated, and it's just too sad a song. Um, I think he's talented, don't get me wrong. He's 
But I don't know about this song. I think it's an odd one to have in the selection, to be honest. Yeah, I, 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 can't, I can't disagree with that. I'm, I'm yeah. Afraid. But I, I get the title because the title is, is, is raw stuff and I think the song is, is, is pretty raw. Michael, what's your take? Blur, given yep. the fact I'm a child of the 70s, I'm a child oh, so of the am 70s. I. I love my Billy. I love the Billy Joel. Can I just tell you, this song gave me goosebumps. Um, yeah. This is this song is so small. It's so intimate. It, 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 yeah. It, it, you are in his world and in his little environment. Is it a Eurovision song? Ah, oh, you know, I don't know. Can we convert that smallness of the, of the beauty of the intimacy of this song onto a huge stage? I'm not sure about that, but this is a yeah. song. On my playlist, I love it, and it's, thank you, Didri. Thank it's you. A bit, it's a bit Carousel, I think. I, I think if we sent this, we're going to have a similar result to what Carousel had last year. It's a really, it's like you said, Michael. It's a really small song. It's it's meant to be more for an um, intimate performance rather than on the big Eurovision stage. Mm. I'm not saying it's a, I'm not saying it's a horrible song. It's I just it yeah. It's just yeah. It, I just it does not sound Eurovision to me. I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm. Could, could, I mean, let's, let's go to Curtis on this. I mean, Duncan Lawrence, I think, very successfully created an intimate performance kind of thing on, on the Eurovision stage. Um, is there not a possibility that Deidre could do the same thing um, for Australia Decides next week? Well, yes, um, I would hope that when he delivers his song, it will be an intimate performance. I'm going to bet a lot of money that there might be a piano on the stage as well um oh yeah <laughs> and it will probably follow a similar thing that duncan had but it, it, it's it's no duncan lawrence for me i've listened to mm. Deidre's other songs um they're very similar vintage 1970s um i don't know what you call them uh, i was gonna say indie kind of thing mm. it's not my kind of music and i don't like this song much at all but Australia Decides is about showing the diversity of Australian music and I feel like that's the theme of this year as I mentioned before Paul Clark mm -hmm. wanted to showcase Australian diversity in music so no it might not go to Eurovision but it's a great song to have in the selection yeah, yeah. And let, let's yeah. just go across to um, Patrick's view on that um okay there are certain songs that I will listen to and there will be certain songs that will just cut right through. I'm one of those people who are kind of very sensitive to like raw emotion in songs. And this song is like, as the title suggests, it's raw. It is extremely raw. And that caught me from the very first listen. Mm. It caught me. In fact, when we were listening to the snippet just before, I wanted to burst out crying because it is just so emotional. Um, and you know what? Um, I'm going to go back to something that Fleur just said just before when it was um, talking about songs that were dated. Um, what needs to be kept in mind is we only just three years ago had a very similar song that won the whole competition for Portugal. So oh yeah yeah I, yeah so we just got to be absolutely certain that when we say that something is dated um mm -hmm. that it's not to be used as something that discounts um discounts the validity of a song because as we have seen in the contest over the last bit like at least decade there are so many different genres that um, yeah. that can um, that can win a contest, and this song is absolutely no exception. In fact, we were talking about Jack before, um, mm -hmm. and him being sort of a jury um, jury favorite. I think this will also be a jury favorite, particularly if that raw emotion that he conveys in the studio version comes out on stage, and I think it will rank highly. Whether it will be a, a televote winner, that remains to be seen, but I think the juries will go big for it. Okay, mm -hmm. and let's just wrap this up and get Mitchell's view. Well, I'm just sad I didn't get to see the Rachel Voodoo doll that I know must be in his house. Um, <laughs> which, uh, this song actually reminds me, okay, I took a while to think of the song that I was thinking it sounds like. It sounds like Austria from 2015, the song with the burning piano. Oh, okay. That's, it kind of gives me that vibe. Oh, okay. Um, 
so yeah for me uh it's a nice indie lullaby sound i like kind of like the light piano touching of it i hear r&b traits from him vocally so i think maybe he's you know he listens to a bit of r&b on the side uh very nice light song it's too light for me uh you've got something like rabbit hole for me that like i said i'm gonna listen to all the like on the train like going mm. or walking around um, this song I would listen to like on a Sunday while I'm vacuuming. That's that goes into that playlist. So it's very yeah, easy, yeah. easy listening. Um, yeah, too light for me. And I think um, there is a distinct difference between old style songs like the Portugal song that was really sophisticated and had a real kind of um, like a new edge to it compared to being too much like a tribute sound. And I think this kind yeah. of stirs on more of yeah. the tribute Billy Joel sound, like you were saying, for me personally. Okay, now panel, it is decision time. We've gone mm -hmm. through five songs uh, in this year's Australia's Decide. And what I want from you guys is I want, firstly, um, your favourite from the five that we've listened to today. And then also um, your tip uh, to win Australia's Decides next Saturday. Um, I'm going to go around the panel clockwise. I think that's fair. So I'm going to start with Curtis and then finish yes. off with Michael. So, Curtis. Yes, out of the five views? that we discussed today, um, Jaguar Jones is my favourite by a long shot for me. Uh, like, I, like I said before, um, and like many of you said, on first lesson, listen, I was blown away. My first lesson was actually Walking the Streets of Seoul. And my friend Danny Krigoning, who was on part one, so make sure you watch mm -hmm. that. Um, yep. She sent me a uh, a recorded. Uh, she recorded on her phone on Triple J of the first listen of J. Your yeah. Jane. So on some mm, poor yep. quality recording. Yeah, she said that to me too. I was yeah, blown. I think we all got yeah. that. <laughs> okay. I was and, blown uh, away. Your tip to win. Uh, Vanessa Amorosi. Um, after the revamp. Uh, before the revamp, I was like, no, nah, there's this used to be famous singer um, trying to get back at, you know, in the crowd again, get in, in fame again. Um, but after the the revamp, um, I've heard people like whispering like Dami, Dami moments. And so I love a, I love a Dami moment. So I feel like okay. it's potential to win. Okay, let's move around to Patrick. All right, so I'm, first of all, um, out of the five we discussed, I'm going to agree with Curtis and say Jaguar, but I'm also going to disagree with Curtis and say it's probably going to be a lot closer than you'd imagine. I would reckon that she will just edge out Mitch on that on that front. Okay. Um, because I think um, they, those two are very, very powerful songs, but I think because of the quirky indiness of Jaguar's song. It's got that much freshness and edge to it. And I think that will just get that over the line. In terms of the whole competition, um, my top two, Montaigne and Vanessa. My tip's gonna go Montaigne. Just. Okay. Yeah. Let's yep. go round to Mitch. Mitch, what's your favorite of these five? Of they these five, winner. you know, I'm gonna give it to proud i'm actually I, I really do like that song and i think i'm gonna i'm gonna really hope that live she delivers and pierces through everyone's heart not only in the venue but through the television um so i'm gonna give that my prediction out of this five uh overall it's going to lessons of love for sure i can't Ooh. after hearing that final chorus and the vocals go crazy it's won my heart okay going around to Ooh. flair Oh, my favorite is um, Jaguar Jones's um, Rabbit Hole. Um, no surprises there. Um, I love that song. Yeah, like Curtis was saying, that blew me away when I first heard it. Um, I do think Montaigne um, will yeah. probably win, though. I think that's, yeah. Okay. Maybe, um, maybe because it was the last song and everyone's anticipating it. It's like, yes, okay, well, she's got a good song. Um, yeah, I do see her go through. Okay. And finally, Michael. <laughs> Rabbit, yeah. Five from five. Okay. Hello, Miss Jones. Hello, Miss Jones. That's awesome. And you know what? I don't really mind who wins. There are ten awesome songs. Ten gonna be there. But let's give it to Jaguar or a little bit of. Let's go back to two thousand. 
a little bit of Vanessa Amorosi because you can't go wrong with her. Okay. Mm. Well, mm. my my take on this, I mean, let's face it, I've got a really soft spot for um, Jack. Jack, and yeah. he is my favourite in this um, this group of five that we've been looking at. Um, however, I think if I was going to pick up the phone and vote, um, I actually would rather send Jackie with Jones to Eurovision, um, mm. purely because I like the the style better, and I think it's also got a chance to be fresher. In a year where I think, from what I'm seeing so far, countries seem to be more wanting to copy what's gone before than actually yeah. break out and try something new. And I think, you know, it's always good to freshen things up a bit as well. Now, that brings to an end our second uh, preview show of this year's Australia's Decides. That, that's where everyone goes, ah. Oh. Oh. There we go. Oh. <laughs> oh. I have to encourage audience participation on these things. Yeah. <laughs> it's just some self-validation I need. Um, now, uh, we are going to be back later this week uh, taking a look at the final uh, semi-final in Norway. But in the meantime, I'd like to thank my fabulous panel. Big thanks to Curtis. Thank you. Big thanks to Patrick. Thank you. Big thanks to Mitch. Thanks, Tom. Good evening. Massive thanks to Flair. Thank you, Tom. Been and a big pleasure. Th big thanks to Michael as well. Thanks, Tom. Hey, and don't forget, in the meantime, if you're thinking, how do I fill that gap between the next show? Click the like button, click the subscribe button, see what content we've got out there as well. And also, you know, this is a you know fantastic group of Aussies here. OJ Australia produces some fantastic content as well. And yes. check them out because they'd love to see you over there as well. Yes. We'll be back later in the week. Until then, it's bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.